We greet you all that have joined us on this Shabbat. This beautiful Shabbat home that Yah has granted unto us, especially here in Jefferson, South Carolina, a beautiful day. Nice and warm in the midst of the winter. Yet he grants us the opportunity to come into his, uh, his mikdash, his mikdash, the place where his name is sealed and approved and the lavim of his house, his people, Yisrael. And what a great blessing that is, Yisrael. As the old ones would cry in the midst of their agony and the perplexities of their pain. They will cry one more day that he has granted me. And they will sing that in the Bay of Yah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you must understand that the day shall come that the Shabbat will not be a time of preaching or any such thing. For we shall know him as he is. We shall have the Torah embedded, enriched in our hearts. We shall come together even in Hashemah and even in the kingdom for one thing and that is to extol him with great exaltation with adoration beyond our ability to express so we look for that time when the transformation and this old vile flesh will be rendered down to a heap of what its begetting origin was dust of the earth we shall be quickened, made alive, revived by the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because Yahshua lives. Because he has the high of the strength of Yah's power to fight and to combat the forces of hell. Then we live by the same power and by the same strength. What a great blessing. That is Yisrael. Let nothing deter you from the path of Yah. Let nothing be the obstacle to cause you to turn into another path that you think is the sadiq or the righteous path. Let us pursue him with everything that is within us. There are times that the song, More Than a Conqueror, I may listen to it 15, 20 times in a row on a particular day. And I just play it over and over and over and the more I play it the more energized I become it causes me to become energized it causes the strength of those words to exude me to lift me up that is the truth and I do it frequently and then when I get to that portion that part whereby I have no sense of strength, then I will put that in the docket. And that revives me. It does something to my inward parts. It makes me pick it up and makes me extend myself beyond my own limitations that I have created by the barringer of my mind. Then I can pursue that agenda that I have placed ahead of me. And there's not a time that I do not overcome. There's not a time that I do not overcome. Every time I overcome Yisra'ya. So to you all greetings, Yoshua's mighty name. I do as I said last week. I want to continue on the path of the mark of the beast and of man. And one of the most vilest of things that pursue them and not only that but that what proceeds out of them Yisrael. it is one thing that what a mind has become so depraved and so deprived that it is one of the most perverse things upon the face of the earth that even the ablations the offerings of Torah and praises unto Yah it becomes a vile stench in his nostrils. It is despicable unto him. He resents it. And it causes his anger, his ass, his keen resentment 
to rise to the Cassandra that he wants to destroy and kill. But he knows that he has ordained all things for a specific time. When a man has become so seared, void of the Torah of Yah, it is a mind that cannot be retrievable. And that is what this mark, it represents that it is so, and that man has embraced what these dogs of hell are teaching. They have embraced such covenant and wicked desires. And that's the only thing they desire, things that are of the temporal. And they desire it, and they will do anything to get it. They will lie, they will cheat, they will kill, they will steal, they will defy the mitzvah of Yah. When a man becomes so irritated by the vileness of Hashatan that the mind cannot turn, there is no reprieval, no saving of that mind. Then the Melach, by the power of Yah, as he dispensed that one, he says, I want that one to be marked. That's in the Nazi, the Mesach. I want their minds to be marked because it has become inundated. It has become full of the dark secrets of hell. And that mind is trying to weave through the corridor of Hashatan to find out the essence of that, and it will never find it out. It will die in that state. Shaul speaks and he emphasizes a thing to us. I want to read this before I proceed. All right? Is that all right? We must understand Yisra'ya, even Shalomo, in all of his debacle, in all of his wickedness. He lets us know that every, as Arazachin Yaramiya has tried to point out to us the core, the voice, the substance, the whole, what he consists of, what his Torah consists of. He says, every Imra, the utterance, the speech, the words of Yah, he says that not part of it, Yisra'ya, but he said that every word of Yah, not Tahor, but he says it is Saraf. It is refined. It has gone through the smelting process. It is the word that has no error in it. It is the word that cannot abide in a place, a conscience, whereby the powers that be has built their fortified strength and that mind to fight against Torah. I want you to hear this carefully. And I use this expression, I don't give a damn. If it's your sons, your daughters, your mother, your father, any relative that fights so persistently against Torah, they're fighting against Yahshua. Their minds have that concept of darkness there's a mark there and it shall be fulfilled in the process of time that that mind shall become so seared that even the smallest light of Torah truth cannot penetrate that mind Yisrael. every every the fullness of whom Yah is it has been saraf. It has been tried even by us. We have tried the Torah of Yah in our own minds. We have tried the validity as to what this is or is there any truth to this matter. And we tend to go our own way. And that way leads to destruction. And we see the prince of that. We see the one that orchestrated going his own way, Hashatan. As he rebelled against the one of most prominent power, against Omadi Yah, and the utterance of Sha'ul, the Imra, the speech that had been refined. You understand that Sha'ul's mannerism was refined by his fiery trials as Yah segregated him from all the Shulishiam that he may be purged of that self identity and the power of his identity will be the revelation of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. So he writes unto one of his beloved, 
one that had a specific place in his bosom. One that was loved much by Shaul. His name, a young laborer of Torah. His name was Timothy. He was beloved of Yah. And he writes unto him at the time of the Acharith, the season whereby the mind would be trained and drinking from this golden cup of Bethel. Isn't that the state that we're in today? Everything, 99.9% of what we ingest, take into our minds, and what we digest, it is not coming from the legitimacy of Torah teaching. It is not coming from that. We're allowing the world to teach us, instruct us. You're never intended for it to be that way for the system of the world. It has been created and orchestrated by Hashotan. Quickly here in the book of Timothy, First Timothy, hallelujah. First Timothy, just two verses and I want to move forward a little. He says in First Timothy, has chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. He says, now the Ruach, it is almighty, yeah, he utters uh, expressively uh, that in the Acharith, in the latter times, the yom, the day, the seasons, uh, the hours that are upon us, uh, he says, some shall depart uh, from uh, Haimona, from the faith, uh, from the measure that Yah has placed into every man. They shall depart from that. They shall depart uh, from the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. They shall depart from the testimonies of Almighty Yah. That is one thing that he commands us to zakhah, to remember, to think upon, to meditate upon his testimonies, that we may teach them to our taf, our bane, our children, our little ones, our siblings, that they will be reminded of the great power of his execution against all those them that oppose his election. That is all the enemy is doing. He is opposing uh, the election of Yah. He is simply saying, you have no power. You have no wisdom to elect that one. He is worthless. He has no substance. She bears no beauty of fruit. Yah says, I know. I understand. But I am the one that justifies. I am the one that makes sadiq. I shall train their mind. I shall train them in the ways, my derech. I shall train them. I shall loma, train, teach, instruct them in my ways. That's what he says, Yisrael. Yisrael give an inspiration unto this ach. They're going to depart from Imuna. And without Imuna, we know we cannot please Yah. You must believe what is written. I don't care how you struggle. I don't care how your mind opposes it, you must believe it. You don't have to try to rationally deduct from that an understanding uh, that is compatible with your learning, your ability, or your flesh. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You cannot tell me the distance of the stars. Man tries. In this most damnable pseudo thing we call science, uh, it is a damn false element of a corrupt mind. You cannot tell me how far... A star is. They can measure in their own formulation uh, and calculation of mathematical formula, but they don't know. They truly don't know. It is a damn thing they call pseudo. It is a false science. Uh, only Yah teaches the true science. It is by the power of his word of creation. That is the only true science. All the rest is a damn false dogma that is purported by the children of hell. Uh, Whose mind says no to you, I will not be at the Bereshit of your creation. That they're trying to search out uh, now is six uh, billion years. As a young lad, they were always increasing the years of creation. They find some uh, carbonized bone uh, and tell you that it is three million, three billion years old. Uh, and we buy the damn lies, we buy that. We buy the damn lies, but we don't buy Torah. 
We buy those damn lies and we think that that gives us a form of intelligence. Yeah, we're intelligent. We are ignorant people. We destroy because we lack the knowledge, the da'at, the ability to discern when these liars of Hashatan are speaking. Hallelujah. He said, the reason they shall depart from the Imunah, they will begin to give Shana heed. They will guard, they will protect the seducing spirits of Hashatan. These are powers that seduce us. These are spirit that draws our minds into this uh, should be this captivity uh, by some kind of uh, feeling that it generates in us uh, that we think we have something that no one else has. We think yeah, we have a knowledge about a matter that no one else has that knowledge about the matter, and that is asinine. It is crazy. It is insane. It is stupid. There is nothing new. Under the sun, Yisra'ya. Everything that we know, it has been rehash, reverberated, spoken, practiced, acted upon. There is nothing new. There is no new message. And the reason there is no new, because we can't believe that from the beginning. How in the hell are we going to believe something uh, that arises today? These false liars that Yah is speaking to them. Four or five, Yah told them all something, and yet there is no agreement with them. Something is twisted. Something is wrong. He's not talking to this bastard generation. It has renounced the Abba, and there's a reason why Yisrael. Hallelujah. He said, they shall give he, they shall give place to seducing spirits, and then they will begin to speak on the power of the doctrines or the teachings of Hashatan. One of the most prominent one is Jesus Christ the Lord. Can I inject this Yisrael? Yeah, I will, whether you buy it or not. The first writing of what we call the Torah or the translation of the Hebraic mandate, it was written in a language whereby the name Jesus was never there. Because there was no J, it was Jesus. And there are those that will confront you. Uh, then what about those? I ask you. Uh, what about those that were immersed in the name of Jesus? Uh, and did not know the name of Jesus. It is a new phenomenon. It is a new development. It was not from the better sheep. But the name Yeshua. The name Yah. Almighty Yahweh. It was there from the better sheep. Because it's in. It is in the 1611. It's there. And so they will use that. As though it gives some kind of credence to their doctrine. It is the doctrine of Hashatan. It is the doctrine of demonic powers. There is no way that these dogs that call themselves leaders of a people could walk in such obsession of covetousness, such damn greed, such lust. And the women perform what they do with no conscience of guilt. Something is drastically wrong. And I shall show you why, Yisrael. It is one thing I'm glad that Yah, he has it all under his mandate of control. We are all right if we can ever get to that place to realize he is in control. That child on his avat's lap, he knows who's in control. He's in the safety of his arm. He rests in the safety of his bosom. And it will not be long that he will take uh, solace in his bosom. He will go to sleep. He knows the strength of his beauty. Although he cannot express it. We must understand that Israel as a people. They shall give over unto doctrines of Hashatan. And they will begin to speak lies. What is a sheikh? A lie, a sheikh, is a spirit that caused the Loshon, the tongue, the language of the tongue, to oppose Yah. And any kind of doctrine that opposes Torah, it is of the zira, the seed of Hashatan. It is from a conscience that is void uh, of the truth of Yah. I don't give a damn who it is. I don't care what they present. I don't care how they look. 
I don't care how you perceive them. That is the truth. Yes, Raya. We began to speak lies in hypocrisy. They will be sanaf. They will be hypocrites. They have no conscience of truth. They are liars. And you says because of that, the reason they speak that way, because their conscience, their lab, their mind, their laba, their conscience, he says their conscience is seared with the hot iron. It is past the ability for cognate understanding and pursuit of what Yah commands. Their conscience cannot even gravitate toward, it cannot even grasp even the, the power and the ability of Yah. It cannot go beyond that because there is a force in that mind and the mind must be constantly fed. And there is one that breeds the mind. The mind must be bred it. The mind must be bred it as it was in this nation. Those of the diasporas and Charlotte, North Carolina was one of the most prominent breeding factories uh, of men of strength. And the large boned woman for the cotton fields. Charlotte, North Carolina was one of the most prominent places uh, of breeding. And so the mind must be bred for what to resist, to withstand. They bred men to withstand the heat of the day. They bred them to have massive formations in their bodies, uh, muscular dynamics, uh, and strong their backs to endure the long days of labor because they were of value and riches. And so the enemy, he feeds as he programs the mind and he must constantly feed one from a cup it is like one trying uh, to kill someone through a slow process uh, as they use different kinds of poisons uh, they feed them a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and a little bit at a time uh, and over the course of the time the body does not have the immunity uh, to fight against it uh, and so the doctrines of Hashotan uh, they are fed unto the minds uh, whereby that mind will not resist it uh, it dies it's of no use it cannot be healed by the Torah of Yah hallelujah speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with the hot iron. And it tells us even what process that they will teach the doctrines of lies. It's reading this morning in the life section of the Observer, this young lad, young man at 2005 became a priest, and then he is leaving that vile whore because it is not the nature of a man not to desire companionship. There are those that are eunuchs for the sake of Yah, and that's beautiful. But everyone was not created to be a eunuch. And when one is a eunuch of Yah, one desires that you will see that, Yisrael. And there are those that are just lustful, carried away with their own damn, twisted, dirty lusts. And that's just a fact. So there's nothing wrong with being a eunuch. A eunuch is more than one that abstains from the, the sensual compassion and desire and passion of embracing uh, an issue. But a eunuch represents a man that was faithful that could enter into, uh, into the presence of Yah. He could enter in by imuna and by a strong disposition because he knew Yah. The eunuch of Candice, uh, uh, that when uh, he, he was, he was uh, it, it encroached upon or visited by Philip, uh, he was not one, he was a trusted man. And so we all should be eunuchs for the sake of Yah, and you're sure, it is simply denied ourselves of this pervasive power of lust that consume our thinking and our minds, and our minds are, are constantly bombarded with it. The only way you can program one is feed it. The only way you're going to program a dog after all of the commands, you must feed the beast. So we must be fed. Quickly here. 
writings unto this hour. In 2 Timotheus chapter 3, verse 1, you know this, and then I want to move expediently into the area that I left off last week. I'm laying this down because when I teach, hollow, preach, whatever, I'm always visible in my conscience, or it is always visible, of what I negated to say because there are times that I get beyond or try to get beyond the leading of the Ruach of Yah. And I will always go back and correct that. And so there were things that I pointed out last week, one that was very vital, that I did not emphasize enough. And I shall. Is that all right? Shaul says here in 2 Timothy, he said, I want to instruct you, 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, he says, my precious Ach, he said, I want you to yada, this yada, I want you to perceive, to know, and not only uh, uh, know this, but I want you to give thanks of praises of Toda and praises unto Yah. He said, this yada, that in the Ach Arith, the last of the last hour of the days, he said, there shall be a time uh, that is so, it is so dangerous that it shall be a perilous time. When one is walking through perils, you have to be observant of everything. There are neighborhoods in America you go in, if you're not observant, you hold everything tight. You tie your shoes tight. You make sure your belt is buckled around your waist tight. Your loins are good about in the spiritual sense. You know how tense you get if you go into a place that it's unfamiliar and you can sense the workings of Hashatan in a visible, viable way. You hold fast to everything. There's a, a, a fearfulness that tends to overpower you. So it is with Yah. We must have this Yare. We must fear Yah. And so when we go into the arena of darkness, we must make sure that our loins are girded. We must make sure we have on the girdle or, or the, or the girdle of our loins. We must make sure that our feet are prepared by the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must make sure that our helmet is secured and our breast is covered with the sadiq or the characteristics of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must make sure that Israel. We have the tav, we have the markings of Yeshua HaMashiach that we shall escape the damnation of the judgments of Yah. We all shall be judged in all the things we have done according to the workings of our flesh. This bazaar, this flesh is dirty and filthy. We must be programmed by His mind. And not by the mind of this world. He said, I want you to understand that these times of great affliction shall come. They shall bow. They shall enter in. And we shall enter into that time. He said, you shall understand because men shall be lovers of themselves. They shall defy the commandments of God. They shall be greedy men. They shall be covetous. They shall boast. They shall have this pride. This uh, geva. A pride. Uh, that is so humorous that it stinks. They shall think of themselves and elevate themselves in their own no damnable twisted mind. They shall be boastful. They shall be gava. It's gava, actually. They shall be gava. You see why these damn twisted faggots? There is a humorous pride. It is called gava. It is a stench to the nostrils of Yaz knows it stinks he said they shall become boastful full of pride and they shall become blasphemous they shall denounce the name whereby our heritage has been established in and they shall hold fast to shekers lies their damn jesus their vile damn Baal, their damn gods, and their damn lords, they shall hold fast to that. And they shall denounce the name of the Most High. They shall do it with a ferocious, uh, agonizing approach. They don't want you to mention that. You tell me they love you. We have no sense of love until we learn how to love Him. And then once we learn how to love 
him. And it is a process of denying me, myself and I. And then you can learn how to love me. We cannot learn how to love one another until we love him. And then we see the beauty of Yisra'iyah. We see the beauty of Yisra'iyah. This is not an individual thing. You cannot do this work of Yah without the whole of Yisra'iyah. You cannot do it. It cannot be done. That's why you see nothing today that makes a statement for Yah. You find these little nutty fringe individuals. Everybody's seeking their own because they're full of pride. They want to be esteemed. They have not labored. They have not suffered in the ways of Yah. Yah is going to bring it down. That's why you have the proliferating and proliferation of such damnable twisted things taking place. Because they're not going to be subject to anyone. They're not going to hear anyone. They think of themselves more highly than they think of others. Quickly moving. They shall be disobedient to their parents, those that oversee them in the ways of Yah. They shall be unthankful. There is no Torah. How can one, even as a young ignorant man, no knowledge of Yah? I did not give a damn how others perceived me. This man reminds me of that. Hell, there are some of us that cannot even praise Yah. In the limited time this man has come to this simple truth, uh, hell his voice, the call of his essence extends unto Yah. Yeah. We that are so damned but corrupt and self-righteous, we don't have a damn thing. Yeah. We don't have a damn thing. Yeah. I'm not backing down for no one. You're not dealing with a coward of a man. Do you get fearful? Sure, I get fearful. All the time. I'm glad of that. Hallelujah. He said they will be unthankful. They will be uh, without the Ruach HaKodash. They will not be set apart. I said to my issue, I think yesterday or this morning, talking about Pesach, I said, my issue, I said the words, Mu'at, it is a time of celebration. It is a time of dancing. It is a time of clapping of our hands. It is a time of singing. It is a time of rejoicing. It is a regala of an event. That's why he commands us. And at that season, he said, all of you all, three times a year, you that are men, you come into Yerushalayim and you gather in my bayat. There's one thing that a man did. He gathered his house together. He planned the trip. He was in tune with the sign. He watched. For he knew that he had 10 days to get there. And he began to make his trek. He saw the barley loaves at the field on the barley ears. And that is the truth. He knew that he would have time to harvest. He knew that he had to go into Yerushalayim Yisra'ya. That's why his dem a vital. It's a time of celebration and reminder. Reminds us. There's a time of hearing the Torah read aloud and let it become, your heart become burned and incest with it. Because there were places there was no reading of the Torah. They did not have a place in every place Yisraya was for the hearing of the Torah. And that was a great beauty once they were entered into Yerushalayim. And they would hear the herald. They did not have the sound reproduction system like we have today. It's because they had a sense of the beauty of that. And they could hear the words as they resonate in the midst of that place, Yisra'ya. The surrounding of the city, everywhere they went, they could hear the Kohan reading the Torah of Yah. And it was precise. Hallelujah. He said that this will be a generation without natural affection. We're dealing with the mark of the beast and man. A beast has no natural affection. A beast will ride the heifer that came out of the heifer that he brought forth and the heifer that he brought forth. Without natural substance of a hava, Yisraya doesn't even uh, present this uh, this kind of attraction to one another. 
We love the wicked. We love the world. Uh, we want to hear about the wicked and the world, but we don't want to hear about the beauty of Yisrael. Without any kind of natural affection, your man has no natural ability to love his wife. He wants her to project an image that is so false and so unreal. That it has been created by the programming of his mind as he has watched the dirty whores and the lust for wicked sluts because he is a slutty bastard himself. He created this damn twisted image in his mind and it makes him think that his show is ugly. We are the diaspora. We have been taught that our women were ugly with that damn big nose, with that damn nappy hair. And so we don't appreciate that today. Uh, and the daughters are so damn twisted that uh, they're doing everything but what Yah says. I don't take one damn word back. It's been engraved in us that they were monkeys and they look like a damn ugly thing. Uh, and so when the essence of their natural beauty began to flow, we don't like that. I've never been captivated that way. That's the honest truth. You look beautiful to me. Don't do that. And so we have been programmed that the blondes have more fun. The blondes are whores. You see these Jezebels out here with their hair dyed blonde, they're whores. Everything that I see, I don't have a television, but everything I see on YouTube or whatever, it looks like a dirty slut to me. It looks like a funky whore. And the blonde-headed boys, they're faggot aids to the fag nation. You understand? I don't repent. And I'm relentless too. So I don't give up easy. And so we as a nation, we have been programmed our minds that our women are unattractive. They're ugly because they have a nose that is larger. Hell, then they can breathe better. better. I don't resent my big nose. I don't resent my big nose. I love it. And look at that thing and say, that's a pretty big nose, boy. Brown. She tells me that I have a large nose, but that's all right. I don't resent my big nose. And if her nose were like mine, I would not resent that either. That's why we have no image of Yah in our minds, Yisrael. It's been programmed and created by one of the most delusional, damnable schemes of hell. Uh, and the only thing we think is pretty what we've been programmed by. And so the precious bath of Tizion of the dark hue, uh, they are not as attractive. Because this damn mind, everything you see is filthy and naked. I'm going to teach on that soon. Uh, and you stop treating the daughters of Yisraya that way. You stop that. You stop compelling them to a way that is unnatural. And you bath, you stop doing that damn twisted mess. These women burn their damn brains out trying to get something straight. Yah made you in his conscience. Yah made your beauty in his conscience. And everything that he made was tough. It was not ugly. It is sin that makes it ugly. It is the wickedness of your own mind that create a damn ugly image. It is all your own damn boastfulness and pride that makes you ugly. Hideous. It is what the enemy has created in your mind that is not of your that you try to alter it. I love who I am. I love me. And so you want to ask me, you've been taught that you look ugly. You stink. You look like damn monkeys. Your noses are big. You've been taught that. And everything that that damn vision of hell teach you, it teach you that. Your daughters want to act like a dirty slut. And these are those that call themselves Hebrews. That their wives dress with dresses so short they're trying to lure. You are a sick damn woman. If you think every man wants you because you're dressed in a certain way. Man, you're twisted in your damn foolish mind. You think you present such a charm and a, and a handsome uh, uh, face and body that every woman wants it. You are a damn fool, man. You are stupid as hell. You're not even a child. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to finish up today, Mama, in a certain place. All right. Don't want to rush through this. He said, this shall be the onslaught of the mind that you shall see you. You, you shall see uh, those that are without the natural affection. They're false accusers. Uh, they are incontinent. They're not satisfied uh, with anything that Yah does. Uh, they are fierce and ferocious. Uh, and they're despisers of those uh, that excel in the excellence uh, of the Torah of Yah. They despise it. There's the sonne. They hate. They resist those that love Yah. They will be traitors. They will trade you and sell you for their own pride and their own lust. If there is ever a man that has experienced that abundantly, I have. They're traitors. They are heady, self-exalting. They are high-minded. They love to think of themselves as being something and purporting themselves as one. Is this not the nature of Hashatan? Did he not say in his high mindedness, I will exalt my kingdom, my merchut, my ideology, my consciousness above the mind of Yah? I will extend, I will exalt myself uh, into the hair of Yah, in the mountain, uh, in the side of the mountain, uh, in the north. Did he not say that? Uh, he said, I shall become like him. I will be like him. And I will cause men with great adoration to bow down, for I will feed them, for I am an excellent one. For his mind was high. It was a self-exaltation. He esteemed himself mightily. Yah said that would be the nature of the Akharit. Why? Because there's a work that must be finished. But I'm glad that Yah has it under control. I'm going to show us something in a moment. Just bear with me. Just stay with me. They shall be traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasures. They love pleasures more than they love Yah. And they will have this form of this righteousness. They will all have this form of, of, of piety and Shabbat guarding and guarding the Torah of Yah. They will have this form that though that they are righteous and more righteous than others, you understand, huh? but they deny the power of Yah. The koach, the characteristic of Yahshua, Hamashiach, they deny the power of Yah. And Yah says, from those, from such you turn away. We don't want to do that. Well, that's my brother, damn your brother. That's my sister, damn the Jezebel. Yah says, when they deny that, when they deny the power, when they deny the strength of your sure this testimony, well, what is that? Well, in all things he pleased the Abba. Yah says, you shub, you shub, you turn around, you turn away, you don't lay hands on that. You understand? You don't embrace that, Yisra'ah. You will know the peri, the fruit of anyone, or the nature of anyone by the peri, what is the substance of their mind. You don't embrace one in the vileness of their shekha spirit. When one has the spirit of Hashotan, it is a mind that does not, will not, cannot, it is seared. It cannot dwell or abide in HaTorah, in HaImat, in the truth. And our minds are given over and seduced by every spirit, uh, every vile thing that is of our shatan, uh, according to our lust, our covetousness, our greed, uh, our passion, our desires. Uh, it is not driven with a ferocious appetite. To engage in the Torah, to meditate day and night on the Torah, is it? We can answer with lies, but Yah knows all things. He is looking down on us all. He sees us all. Oh, He, he sees everything. 
There's nothing. We can be pretenders all we want to. I can pretend and go home and embellish myself in every kind of vile, damnable, twisted thing. Searching the damn internet for some of the most hideous, vilest of activities. Well, I can pretend. But when the wash of the fuller began to wash, it's coming out in the wash. There's no doubt about it. It's coming out. You can hide yourself for a season, but you're not getting by. It is the nature of a hypocrite, and that shall be one of the most pervasive, one of the most prominent spirits and powers to seduce in the Akharith. Yah says, I want you all the rest in assurance. There is one, this religious spirit of harlotry. She sells you to every kind of lust. Isn't that what a whore does? There are women that are on the street. It's not because they want the money. It is just a driven power of darkness that drives them. They're not even satisfied because there is no man that literally pleases them. Because they have not met a man. When one meets a man, you will know you have a man because he has the power of the Ruach. When Yah meets a man, he breathed in him by the power of his chai, his life. And the man became a living substance. He has breathed upon an identity of a beast. Even the beasts got their life from Yah. Even the beasts of the field have what we call, quote, a soul, unquote. They have a life. There's a life in them. There's a life that is in them, exercise uh, uh, on the exterior that we see the beasts. They're animated. They walk. They breathe just like us, and they talk. He simply made us mad a little lower than the Melachim. And he breathed the power of his wisdom into man. That's why he could name everything. Man did not create names. Man did not create the names. Yah breathed it into his mind. And out of that DNA, everything that we should be was in that DNA. It was only because of the corrupter. And Yah feed us, he tries to, by the operation of the two-edged sword, to cut out this damn mess out of us, to alter, to correct the DNA dysfunctionality. And yet we go back, we trek back to the ways of darkness, to our own flesh. We forget what he has told us and commanded us. And we wonder why our conditions are so insane and so debilitating. We find no pleasure in him. Because we have shoop, we have turned away from Yah. He commands us what to turn away from. He said, I shall raise up this most formidable spirit. And she shall entrench herself in the city on the earth called Bavel. That is so recognizable. That she shall exalt herself like Nimrod. Above the Torah, she shall create her own damn twisted, dirty, faggot gods and damn dogs. She shall create her own Christo, her own Christ, her own damn Jesus. She got a Jesus for those that call themselves black. She got a Jesus for those that call themselves white. She got a Jesus for those that call themselves Mexicans. She got a Jesus for those that call themselves Koreans. She got a Jesus for those that call themselves Japanese. She got a Jesus for those that call themselves Cubans. I can go on and on. Because in this damn dirty whore, just recently, a few months ago, uh, this woman that was of what we call uh, a European descent... uh, She brought a man of what we call the African descent to the little whorehouse. She was raised in Tennessee. She was brought up in, whereby she spent all of her life and her mother was still there. And when they saw that, they said, you're not welcome to come back. 
We will never marry one that is of different ethnicity. And the thing became, I don't know if you all read it, it was in every paper in the United States. We rather read the comics and silly stuff. And so when the big hoopla began to be exposed, then the one that calls himself the pastor, they had a vote on it. And the people rejected them because his skin. So they got a Jesus for the whites. They got a Jesus for the blacks. They got a Jesus for the, for the Nigerians. They got a Jesus for, the, uh, for, the, for, for those of uh, uh, Djibouti. They got a Djibouti Jesus. They got a Madagascar Jesus. They got a Suriname Jesus. They got a Brazil Jesus. The lies, the damn Jesus of filthy images created by the powers of hell to try to ferry out Yisra'ya. You can allow that damn dirty spirit to overtake you. That's right, Todaya. Hallelujah. So y'all say, I create this image and she's acceptable by all. Huh? She is honored by all, but I want you to pay attention to this. I put it in the book so that Yachahan could write it to you. Gilyana. Chapter 17, verse 4. I, I must reintroduce this verse again because I fail to give us somewhat of an identity of this woman, the cup of her hand, and who and what it represents. Gilyana, Revelation chapter 17 and verse 4. It says, as Yokohan, he was carried, he was carried. In the Ruach of Yah, into the wilderness for revelation. We must allow Yah to carry us out of this Babel cesspool of wickedness. We got to allow our minds to be carried out of this cesspool of whoredom. That we're always lusting. This is the sure sign of her mark that she has begun to produce seed in your conscience. And then the more seeds you allow to proliferate as those pigweeds was, were there and gardened for. I say, how do we get these out, Simeon? Let's bail them. Let's do something. Because what the chickens were doing, they were eating the seeds. They were passing them through their boughs and it had fertilized in it. And they were so prolific over there, it was just beyond the ability to eradicate and once they become so prolific uh, that there is no space for anything to grow but them, they overcome. And that's the way it is with this beast's mind. It is a mind that is adamantly against you. It is the spirit uh, that speaks on the things that are defiled and wicked. Uh, and you rejoice in that something is wrong with us. I want to show us something today, Yisraya. We're not going to get by any of us. Not you or not me. We're not getting by. He says here in Gilyana, Revelation 17, 4. He said, in the woman that I saw this religious edifice, this powerful identity. Uh, he said, and the woman that I saw, he, she was arrayed. She was dressed in purple and scarlet. Uh, and she was decked. She was decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Uh, was that not the covering of a shatan? Every precious stone was the covering of his simla, his garment. Was it not? Was it not? And every precious stone covered her. That dirty thing we call the Catholic whorehouse, she's not covered by every precious stone. It is the mind of a religious conscience of a nation that there is no self-containing of that mind. It never has enough. It can have a thousand pounds of gold, it wants more. It doesn't care how it oppresses the poor and those that are the dull or the only, those without, do not have substance, do not have wealth. It doesn't give a damn, Yisra'ya, and that's just a fact. She's dressed in a way that she is noticeable, she is recognizable, she has pearls, and she has, there is a golden menachit. Not just a cup, but it is a Medekith, a cup. 
not a cup that would be a kosher or a kosher, but this is a men imi and achith. It is a cup of sacrifice. It is the cup that was used when one used the milichith. It was a cup that was used in the sacrificial offerings of the idols of darkness. She has a cup. You hear that? It is vital to hear that. Because Yah is in control, I will show you. Just bear with me. She has this men achith. She has this cup of this bowl whereby the blood of sacrificial offerings of darkness, whereby it flows from that. And our minds are sacrificed to every kind of vile, wicked thing it is, Yisrael. It's in our hands and it is money. It is full. It overruns. It is full of abominations of the shithuts, vile, idolatrous offering. It is full of the to a perverse, wicked, depraved thoughts, actions, and deeds. And it is full of the big ghoul, unclean, minister, nasty, filthy, nida. An unclean minister rag of a woman. It is full of every kind of filthiness, of immorality, idolatry, the nita. It is full of that. Full of it. What profound thing upon the face of the earth that that's all it spew out. There's only one thing that has been created. And the demons of hell and Hollywood control it. For they are the masters and they are the ambassadors of Hashatan. When they can take a two dollar dirty slut of a whore. When they can take a faggot man kissing another man's neck. And people drool and they're at all over these. Some of the most creepiest, damn twisted, nutty looking people on the face of the earth. I examined them from their hair down to their head. Some of the most crazy looking heads. The heads look like damn uh, aliens. And that's the truth. The ears of the women look like crazy, stupid uh, alien beings. They're crazy, stupid-looking legs. I, I would not call that a pretty pair of legs. What they, what they, what, what they offer to the world? Not me. So they have made the women of the diaspora to, to despise what they will use the words, uh, the, the, the superlative, their, their voluptuous, uh, the bigness of their bones and their ways. Uh, they have made them despise that. Uh, and they're starving themselves like damn fools. I will come on, my friend. Sit down a while. You're sure sit down, all right? So they're making them despise that, and they're crazy today. Like a bunch of damn fruitcakes. No, I'm not saying that you don't. You keep yourself healthy, bathed as I own. But this is what the world has done to you. Twisted your mind in such a damn twisted way. Gotta have it stringy and long. You're silly. You want everybody to see your stringy what? Come on, Yisraga. Cover your heads, your baths. Hallelujah. She has this cup. It is male, full of abomination and filthiness of zana. Of her zana of her fornication she is unfaithful can I ask us a question when we drink from this cup our minds become unfaithful to Yah we're not faithful in prayer we're not faithful when we pray at home we're not faithful just to talk with Yah and he walks with me and he talks with me he tells me I am his own we're not faithful a whore is an unfaithful individual. And so when we have this zona, we are unfaithful to Yah. We're not faithful in our meditation. We're not faithful to consider Him. We're not faithful to pray about the matter. We're not faithful in anything at all. And that's the truth. We must understand the definitive of Yah's speech. And the definitive, it is absolute. There is no altering. You cannot add, you cannot correct, correct it. It is the absolute resolution of the matter. And everything that Yah speaks is the absolute resolution of the matter. 
He doesn't need for us to deduct from it. He, believe, he needs us to believe it and walk by Emona in it. He doesn't need our private interpretation uh, in the assessment of the matter. And that's what this damn vile matter of the beast does. It excess matters uh, according to one's own loss and high-mindedness, uh, one's greed and what one has been fed. If you fed the filth of this world daily, it's going to make you spiritually unhealthy. And that's a fact, Yisrael. You dine on it. You eat sugar all day, you're not going to be healthy. Your teeth are going to rot. Your body is going to be, develop rickets and your bones are going to become soft. You're not going to get the necessary uh, nutrition for your body. And so what they're doing in these dirty whole houses, they're dressed well. These vile men drive Cadillacs. Forgive me, yeah. They drive uh, Lamborghinis. They drive Bentleys. They drive Maybach. Is that something? Mesach and Maybach. That's that $350,000 Mercedes-Benz. And Yah says that your Mesach is greater than a $350,000 Mercedes-Benz. They drive some of what they call some of the most vintage automobiles. Rolls Royces and all. Get six miles to a gallon and they drive that. They don't give a damn about Yah's created resources. We can't live like that, Yisra'ya. That's why he brought them out into an ummah. That they be a strength. Unified under one umbrella and one covenant. They, they have pledged themselves to Yah. It is by that love that nations see. Uh, they know that they are the people of Yisra'ya. You don't see a damn thing today, Yisra'ya. It's appalling. It is. In my time... As Shaul wrote, I, I'm sorry, as Kepha said unto the, those that uh, scattered abroad, he wrote in one of his letters, uh, he, he told them to think on the things that I've taught you. He said, for my time of my decease uh, is near. I know I'm going to be leaving here. But you all be reminded, you remember the things that I've taught you and think on those things. Proceeding ahead, Yisrael. It says, and upon our forehead was written, Mr. Bavel, the great, the rab, the mother of the Emosh is the birth of holotry, uh, of every kind of zona, every kind of unfaithfulness, uh, and abominations of the earth, the pigula. Now, I must regress back to this cup. It is a cup full of every kind of vile thing. We must understand some of the ingredients of the cup. It is a vile brew. But I want you to understand this, Yisraya. There is nothing that takes place and Yah has not ordained. Can I show you this cup? Will you believe me if I show you this cup? And who is the one that is pouring out of the cup? Will you believe me, my ach? I know you will. Will you believe me, my friend? I will show you the cup. Turn quickly to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. How do you find out these things by laboring? By studying day and night and studying when I have free time. Sometimes I'm lazy. I can't study because uh, and sometimes when I labor in a way that is somewhat difficult to study. It is. But that doesn't preclude me from uh, looking to the book, the stroll. I want to show you the cup. That you will know that you got it all in control. Put it in your shoes, hands. Everything will be all right. Put it in the hands of Yah. And everything will be all right. Put it in the, mas the master's hand. Oh, it is all in Yah's hands. I believe that. He cannot leave us in the darkness. This cup. You're going to allow the vile nature of hell to override and overdrive us. But Yah says, don't worry. He said, before you're ever created, I, I, I reveal something to my Yeremiah, my prophet. My messenger for you for this hour. And he speaks to us quickly, Yeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 51. I want to begin at verse 6. He commands us here to flee, to run. 
out of the midst of Babel. Get out of her thinking. Run out of her. Touch not the unclean things of the world. Get out of her. He said, and deliver every man his own nephesh. You must deliver your own nephesh. You must come out of her. You must, Yisraya, just like Lot, he ran out. The Melach said, I cannot leave this place unless you go. Be not cut off in her of all her vile, wicked ways, her iniquity. For this is the time of Yah's vengeance. We're in that season, the Akharith of Yah's great vengeance. He will render to her a recompense. And for you, Yisra'ya, he lets us know, he says, Bavel, Bavel, Bavel has been, is, she has been a golden za'ab. She has been a golden cup in whose hands? Yahweh's hands. She is his cup. He's going to ferret out his nation of people. She has been a jewel to Yah. She has been a jewel unto Yah. He can say to the Melokim, sit still. For she is ferrying out that which is abominable. She is a golden cup. She is a jewel of a carless. She is a pricely commodity in Yah's hands. Put it in his hands. He will make it all right. Let the cup of your tears flow in his hands and the agony of your hearts. Just trust in the hands of Yah. He will make it right and fix it. He will fix it for you. Put it in the hands of Yahshua, my friend. Put it in Yah's hands. It's all right to cry. Put it in the Master's hand. Put it in His right hand. For Yahshua is the right hand. I'll teach on that. The mark in the forehead and the right hand. He is the right hand of Yah. Put it in Yahshua's hands. He will make it all right. He says at Babel, Yokohan said, I saw this golden cup in her hand. Yah wanted that to be identified because the prophet before him had spoke of the matter. He said, come out of her, my people. Be ye separate. Touch not the unclean things. We must understand what the nida is. We must understand what the filthiness is. Touch not the unclean things of this olam. And he says unto the nobi, he says, Bevel, the United Snakes of Devils, USA, Russia, Goma, China, they have been a golden cup. Canada, France, Britain, they have been a golden cup. For this is the resounding power of the birth uh, and the refortification of the power of Bevel. Confuses the world, her doctrines and her teachings. For Bevel, I'm glad of that. She is in the hand of Young. And so the cup is measured. Because we as Yisra'ya, we are not just expediently. Yeah? Then our hearts are full of such to do wickedly before Almighty God. He doesn't over pour his indignation on us. He pours out of his cup by measure. He doesn't allow Babel to overrun you. We got all we need. We got all we need to resist the mark of this beast and to drink from her cup, from her religious proudness and her religious infatuation to overthrow the, the Melchut, the kingdom of Yah. 
to overthrow the place where he resides and the power of his strength of his government is administered from our minds, from our bosom. He says that Bevel has been. And you know, Yah doesn't speak in past tense or present tense. He speaks in the now. He is a very present help in the time of great calamity and trouble. He speaks of the present. Every word that we read, it is a present now word. It is not a word of yesterday. It is a now expression. Mevel is now. Has been was the last hour, wasn't it? Or the last minute is passed from us. She has been and is. She is a zaham, a precious cup, a golden. This dirty slut, that's why Yakahan saw the cup and what was in it. Hallelujah. She has been a golden cup in Yah's hand. She has. She has been the minister of Yah's plan for a nation that despised him. You understand? Yahshua says uh, the word of Yah, light has come into the world. And man hates the awe, the light, the truth of Torah because their heart, their mind, their deeds are sadistic. Their deeds are of darkness. Their deeds are dark. That's why they hate the light of Yahshua. That's why men today don't want Yahshua to shout upon them. And they think they're going to come unto Yah by some door, by some damn God. The lies. You're not going to deny Yahshua. He is the door. He is the way. There's no other way, Yisrael. Yeah. Don't you know there was a damn pig that said, I denied Almighty Yas Hamashiach Yahshua. That's why the dirty bastard's going to suffer. These beasts are going to suffer. If I'm not a true man of Yah, then let them insult, assault me. I'm not going to try to defend it with my own prowess, my own physical ability, because I will knock them all out. Fat or the matter it is settled. I will knock every last one of them flat out and break them to pieces. But they're not even worth that. Yah is the one that his rod, when his rod, as Zohin Yah Rabbi Yah was teaching us, when his rod began to shatter and break, you cannot be healed, Yisraya. We put it all in his hand. And we trust him, Yisra'ya. For Bethel has been the golden cup of the hand of Yah. And it said, and made not some, but made all. Called all. The whole, the fullness, the entirety. Made all the earth. We are in the Olam. We are in the earth. But we are not of the earth. We're in this world, but we're not of the world. Our minds cannot be trained by the most ferocious beast there is. It cannot be trained by a system that despises even the name of the Most High. We cannot allow the world to train our daughters and our sons to cause them to hate Yah. We're in the world. But we're not of the world. Yahshua says, I pray not for the world. I pray for them whom you have given, nothing bestowed upon me. She calls all, the whole continent of Africa, the whole continent of South America, the whole continent of North America, Canada, the whole continent of Europe and Asia. And even though you want to set that little island in the sea and call it a continent, Australia, even that. You understand, Yisraya? Cause all, all of the earth that made all the earth uh, shut down. Drock. Drock. When water is inebriated, you don't even know what's coming. When one's mind has been blinded by the darkness of sin and the mark of the mind, 
whereby it has desecrated the very concept of Almighty Yah. They can't see in the darkness. They can't see the light ahead. They can't see the train as they walk on the train truck. They can't see the storm that is coming. They have been marked, Yisra'ya, for the wrath and the terror of Yah. He says, Babel has made my work easy. She is my cup. Hallelujah. We are going to drink out of the same cup that Yoshua said to Kepha, the Shishiam. He said, this cup that I drink, surely you will drink of this cup as well. As for now, I must drink. I must be the pattern. I must be the example for you. And the same cup that he drinks out of, we must drink out of that cup, Yisrael. And we will know the cup in the hand of Bevel. And we know that Bevel is the cup of Yah to ferry out everything that opposes him. He's going to ferry it out, Yisrael. You cannot defend anything that is a Bevel. We must defend the Torah of Omar. Yeah, we must be excited about the Torah. Of Yah. She is the cup in Yah's hand. She has made the earth shota drunk. And the nations have drunk of her Yah in her wines, her sweet flagrance of wine, her nasty, dirty little sluts, her fag eyed men that are faggot dogs, have no nature of a beast. When a man becomes so sick in his country, he doesn't even have the nature of a beast. Even that bull desires that which is opposite of him. Even the ram desires that which is opposite of him. Even the billy desires that which is opposite of him. Every beast of the field desires that which is opposite. It is a mind so seared and so depraved. It has no conscience of what's right. And so the enemy... This cup of Bavel, she's training the minds to resist Yah. I will show you some of the things in her cup that we take so for granted. That's why the enemy has us, he has us acting like fools and foolishness and folly. You can sit down and laugh all damn day, but when it comes to Yah, we have no time for him. We can talk about folly all day, but when we gather among each other, there's no testimony of his power. Nobody has a damn thing to say. You are a twisted fool. I don't give a damn who you are. You are a damn twisted fool when there is no power of testimony in you. As the old folks would say, I think I'll just testify while I have the chance. If nothing else to say, he is tough. Baby girls, being children, he is sweet. And this I know of nothing else to say. And then when she began to allow that spirit to be brought under the subjection of, of your testimony, you'll find much to say. But yet under the spirit of the world, you find much to say, don't you? That's the way we are. When it comes to Yah, no, I have nothing to say. I would be a damn fool as to how Yah enriched me with the plethora of understanding. Eh? Not to want to open your minds to it all. I don't have nothing. I don't have to wait for a season to tell you. It's just so much I can't tell you all at one time because you will get weary. I don't have to wait for something exciting uh, to happen to me uh, to tell you. Moving quickly, I must move with, with experience today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She has caused the nations to be drunk with her yahin. Therefore, therefore, the nations are hala. They're mad. They boast in their own praises. Look at me. I'm this, I'm that. You're not worth a damn, boy. You little boy. Playing with your toys. You know, that's what Evangelist Hartsfield would say at times, little boy. When I would act like a boy, he would tell me you act like a boy. Little boy. It was insulting, it was embarrassing, but I didn't hate him. I said, thank you, man. Appreciate that. And I would find my little secret place and I would cry. I said, don't want to be a boy. I said, I want to be a man. And that's how the resolution and the remedy came today. 
for me, for a man. I didn't want to be a boy. And he had the, the fortitude of integrity to tell me. Could I like a boy? Little boy? Hallelujah. If I never see you again in this realm of life, Evangelist E.J. Hartsfield, somewhere in Chicago, if you're alive, I appreciate all that you gave me. I mean that with all honesty. I do. I appreciate everything he taught me. In him, all of his ignorance. For it was the platform of what was to come. Hallelujah. She has made all the nations drunk in her Iyayan. She has become inebriated the nations. They become overwhelmed. They become carried away by her subtleties and the sweetness of her lies. It is the impression of the beast and the nature of man. Six, six, six. They become so engraved in this political, economic system and so engraved into the religious worship that everyone, everyone today have their own faith, don't they? Yeah. Listen to me, Yisraya. Daddy went to the Methodist whole house and Mama to the Baptist. Don't tell me they have the same faith. Yeah. I watched one of my cousins that her husband went to Mayfield Baptist whole house. I never could understand that, although I was ignorant. And she went to Nazareth Primitive Baptist. They left on their Sunday, she went her way, and he went her way. You tell me that's a house that's not divided? divided? You tell me that's not a damn sick house? You tell me that the man is not weak as duck's piss? Sure he is. I don't give a damn what you say, Yisraeli. Huh? It's just the truth. She went to a dirty whole house. She came back, she was self-righteous, and he came back and he was self-righteous. And I will watch them. I will say, you know, how can there be love there? How can there be a, 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 an express volume of compassion when he doesn't even believe her way and she doesn't believe his way? Something is wrong. I've watched that. Daddy was loving. Hell, Daddy didn't know what love was. Mama was loving. Mama still doesn't know what love is. That's the truth. I don't care whether you buy me. You don't know what love is unless one obeys the commandments of Yah. Herein is love. Not that you love Yah, but that he loves Yah, you. If any man says he loves Yah and Shema God not, uh, his mitzvah, his commandments, uh, he's a damn liar. Yeah. You can draw the dress it up for mama, daddy, anybody you want. It doesn't mean a damn thing to Yah. Yeah. It is the final resolution. Uh, it is the stamp of what love is. Yeah. If any man says he loves Yah and keeps not his commandment, he's a liar. Mama says she loves Yah. Here are the two great commandments. To love Yah with all, whole, all of our, the wholeness of our strength, mind, everything, our substance, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Upon these hinge the 613 Torah writing statues of Almighty Yah. So how in the hell could Mama know love? Daddy knew love. They had an attachment that was based upon emotionalism, a sensual feeling of attachment. That's all it was. I don't give a damn what you say. It's either that they know love and Yah is a liar, or they are liars and Yah is the truth. Let every man be a liar. Let every man be a liar. Here, you, 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 every man, every woman, every... And let Yah be the truth. All right then. So I don't care how the emotions express a matter. That doesn't mean it's, it's according to the constitution of Torah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get somewhere today. That's all right. You don't have to buy me. That's all right. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for money. You all send it off and you're sitting out there. Your home is being blessed today with a plethora of wisdom. Send an offering to help us. It costs you to do this. Hallelujah. You sit there on your lazy behind and don't give a damn about Yah. And your home is filled with the blessings of Yah. We're not begging for a damn thing. It's a great blessing to give. It's more promising to give. Why not give? Yah is giving to you today. Hallelujah. 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 I, I want to share with us just for a moment some of the things that are in this cup that we don't, we don't think out of the hands of this dirty whore. All right. It says here in the book of Sharach. I want to read this because it is so beautiful in the book of Sharach. It speaks about this menachith, this cup of this Jezebel's hands 
and what it is purpose for. She is a sacrifice in the hand of Yah unto all of this idolatry marked mind that is against Yah. A beast nature when a child act like, acts like a beast, it is a nature against the authority of the home. And it takes a head harder than the child's head to, to bring the child down. You say, boy, you're not going to rise up in here like that. The Aslan says, no, we're not going to rise up against this Torah like that. It says in the book of Shirak, chapter 10, and I have a few verses I want to read out of the book of Shirak, so bear with me. It says in Shirak 10, 13, it says, forgave her for pride, this exude arrogance of humorous pride. That you're better, you got something that no one else has, lies. He said, that is the beginning of sin. Was not her shatan lifted up? Is this not this a lifted up nation? She's full of pride. Do you not hear the Republicans and all those of their politician or their political uh, 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 mandate? Or their political pedigree is the right word? I love America. I want to save America. You damn ignorant, stupid bimbo of a fool. What is America? You talking about North America? South America? The Americas? It's all America. Down in Brazil, that's America. You despise Mr. Noriega and you put him in prison. Down in Chile, all of that is America. Which part of America do you love? These damn hypocrites. I love my country. I love America. Well, all of us are America. Venezuela, that's America. All oh, the people may be dark skinned in the hue of the skin, much darker than yours, but it's still America. Canada's part of America. Dim dark Canadians ain't like us. I know them dark Canadians ain't like you. It is the truth. You get upset, you ought to get upset with this damn wicked spirit today. I love America. I love truth. Damn America. She has enslaved the minds of all of us. We have been hoodwinked. We have been manipulated. We have been raped. We have prostituted our minds. We become a fledgling cauldron, a, an open sepulcher, a field of every kind of idolatry, whoredom spirit that one can imagine. That's why our minds take us from one gamut to the other. And that's the truth. It is the nature of a beastly instinct. It is the mark. It is the arrogance, the geva, this exalted pride, this exalted hubris nature. Shirak, this messenger, the wise counselor in the university of Yah in Yerushalayim. He said, when this pride enters, it began called sin, uh, of the hata'a, the sin. And he who clings to it, uh, he who clings to this pride, I'm proud of my children, Shirak 10, 13. I'm proud of my husband, I'm proud of my wife, I'm proud of my success. He said, he that clings to that. And that's what this whore pours out. Make yourself proud. Proud to be an American. Well, I'm not proud to be uh, what we call an American. My identity is in the heritage of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. I have been scattered by the commands of Yah. He has put, scattered me abroad and the nation of Yisrael. And he's going to bring us back to his heritage. He's going to raise up the Nobi, the prophet, to cause our minds collectively to be one. That we are prepared that when this thing happens, think it not strange. When you fall into diverse trials, that we will know it's not strange. And so when we hear the true messenger of the mandate of Yah for this hour, to guard our mind from this vile mark of Hashotan, a mark seared, a man that doesn't give a damn about Torah, hates Yah, despises Yahshua. It will be strange when we hear the true messenger of Yah, the, the Nobi, the prophet. Who is he? We will know when he stands. We will know the voice of that. Not only is that a manifestation of man, of the power of Yah in man, but it is the strength of his Torah, the manifestation of 
of the utterance of his Torah as it began to burn like a fire among Yisrael. That's what they're going to speak. Fire will proceed out of their mouth to consume. And it must be that way today, Yisrael. It must be. We must love Yah. We love everything but Yah. We loved our sins, our wickedness because of our pride. Anytime there is sin there, this wickedness, then there is a cauldron of pigul, of every kind of vile, idolatrous, abominable thing that one can imagine. And you know what flows out of you, don't you? I know better than you what flows. All right? I know. Hallelujah. He says, it shall be poured out, or he shall cling to it, shall pour out abomination. So anyone that clings to this cup of this arrogance, this pride of Bethel, uh, to denounce you out of that vessel, uh, pours abominations to Abba, unclean, vile things. Uh, because we're drinking from this cup of pride, Yisrael. Therefore, Shirak says, therefore, Yah brought upon them, Yisrael, us, uh, strange calamity, uh, extraordinary afflictions, uh, and overthrew them utterly. Did he not do that? Is he not going to do the same thing? Who is going to overthrow this vile uh, nation and nature of man? We can see the patterns throughout the Torah, even Yisra'ya. When they love their sins, when they become so hubris in their actions. That's why the first thing they did, they built a damn calf as a god. You build a damn beast in your mind, it is the mark of beasts. And everything we do, it has to be, it has to deal with the beast or the labor of a beast. I don't give a damn what we lust after what we want. It is the mind, the labor of a beast. You want a new pair of shoes, it is a beast whereby they're created from. You want a new house, it is the nature of a greedy damn man that will charge you 1.3 million and it's worth a hundred thousand dollars. And that's the truth. Beasts consume everything for itself you can take those two dogs that they have those two rottweilers born out of the same brood you throw a pile of meat in there with some blood and you will find some beasts although they are they, they are joined by nature by one bond out of the same brood you will see beasts fight like beasts and that's what Yisra'ya, we fight Yah over some of the most putrefied, damnable, twisted things that are of no value to us. We open our hearts to this beast nature. We say we want to drink from Bavel because we're impressed by everything she puts out confuses. Her damn computers confuse us. They're nothing but pieces of trash. Break down and go out. It's not worth a damn. And that's a fact. We're coming to that time whereby the voice of Yah's messengers, uh, they're going to resonate above the clouds. And there will be that little old mama sitting over there in the darkness of the corner of that house. Uh, Papa doesn't know how to get up and move any Muna, And she will hear the clear sound of Almighty Yah. And cry, do you hear that? And out of the midst of the darkness of his uh, deep, uh, deep uh, slumbering, he shall awaken and say, I hear the voice. I hear the sound of the shofar. I hear the blowing of the shofar of Yah in the wilderness. Let us go into the wilderness, into the place of Bimit Bar, that we can hear what Yah speaks. And if Yisra'ya was truly in Bimit Bar, we would hear what Yah speaks, Yisra'ya. We're in the cauldron of sin, we're wrapped up in Bavel. She's a golden cup in the hands of Almighty Yah. That's a fact. Her filth, Yah is the one that's dispensing it. And just because of the promise unto Abraham, Yishak and Yaakov, he has not allowed us to be overwhelmed with that. He has not allowed it to be poured out upon us uh, that it overtakes us. That's why we all have a testimony. We don't have to stand up in test of every time you gather with Yah's people. Every time the Baptists are gathered to cook, it should be the testimonies of Yah. Shouldn't that be grumbling because of your damn God, your damn God, dog, pig nature? Every time the ark get together, it should be the testimony of you. I should not be this damn grumbling for the God of your damn belly, this damn beast, always complaining and murmuring. It shouldn't be that. It is the damn filthy, vile, wicked God of your damn belly that growls like a damn dog. And you act like a damn dog. Try me if you want to. 
Damn vile wicked spirit. Can't go around this Torah. Can't get around this. You may try. But you cannot get around. Hallelujah. You may try but you cannot get around. I shall proceed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says. Uh, in this we can see. Therefore Yah brought upon them strange calamities. Extraordinary afflictions. Extraordinary afflictions. He instructs us as a nation that we, as a nation, that even though these afflictions shall come upon me, that many are the afflictions of the Sadiq. But Yah delivers them out of them all. But he said they are extraordinary. They're beyond one's ability to understand the terror of that. You cannot, your mind cannot escape it. It's almost like the beasts of the field. When it thunders, they gather together, don't they? That's how we lost, what, six, seven cows there? Or oh, you think the lightning hit each one at a time, bang, and bang, no. You see, it caused the earth to tremble, it hit the ground. And that ground was wet with water. And it was just a conductor. And when the fire began to burn, and they all gathered together in their little place thinking they have escaped, I don't say that for mockery because that was a lot of money, six, seven cows, that... Oh, that was probably four grand, at least $4,000. That's a lot of money for us. And they were all gathered together, and when that lightning hit the ground, and the conductor of that water say, roll, baby, roll. And they all there together, their hoofs planted, and the fire of that stroke out of Hashem I am, he caused them all to be burned to death. And his word is a fire. It thunders from Hashemaim. When the Melach of Yah goes to inspire the bosom of Yah's designated messenger, they take the coals of the fire of Yah's altar and they place it upon his lips. And all of the dross, the things that he wrestled and battled with, he began to have this sense of what things Yah is drawing out of him, Yisra'ah. And then he gives me with great clarity the Torah of Yah. This is a life that we live. It is not an art of pretense. It must be real. Love is a real thing. There's not this damn false thing for a moment and then it's gone. It's for real. I found many men that say they love, they don't know a damn thing about love. I found men that say that their love is not dysfunctional and they're so damned about dysfunctional. It's pathetic. They don't know a damn thing about love. That's why I don't use the word that much. I want my actions to speak for me. Let the works I do speak for me. Oh, let the works I do. I don't sing it like we used to sing it, Mama. That's all right. You can sing it the way you want. Let the works I do speak for me. Let my defense of Torah speak for me. Hallelujah. Not my words, but let the works I do. Let, the, let my actions, my deeds, you watch me from a distance. Let that speak for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Shirak says in 1513, you all take these verses down. You can look at them. I want to move somewhat expeditiously. So I'm going to read a few scriptures so, uh, in, in sequen sequential order so that I can move a little bit, all right? Sharat 1513, Yah hates all abomination. He hates what's in the cup. And we know in the cup of Bavel, it is nothing but uh, abomination. Uh, it is what sear the mind, marks the mind, prepares the mind uh, to reject Yah. Yah hate all abomination, and they, and they are not loved by those uh, that fear Yah. Though, listen to what Shirak says. Those that fear Yah, they love no abomination. They do not uh, fellowship. They're not in bed with any kind of filthy abomination. I don't care who it is. Those that practice things that are vile, they do not embrace them and, 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 and strengthen them by, by the commands of Yah. And those that love Yah, they, those that fear Yah, they, they do not love those things. Shirak 17, 26. Yah says, turn again to the Most High, Yah. 
Let us, Yisraya, turn again to Yahweh and turn away from our iniquity, our own, our own, our wicked, perverse manners, our ways that are destructive unto us. He says, for he, for Yah, will lead you out of darkness into the light of Rapha, into the light of heaven. That's what he'll do. He'll lead you out of darkness into a healthy conscience and mind and hate abominations. Not just hate them, but he said intensely. We should hate abominations intensely. There should be a vile hatred of abomination. You see things, you ought to hate it. Now those that approach you, you know what? That you don't want them close to you. I don't want no faggot close to me. When I discern that immediately, I don't want no faggot speaking to me. I don't want no butch bull dagger. I don't want these vile ones that are haters of Yah trying to. I don't want them embracing me. I don't want those that despise the Torah of Yah call themselves. Hey, my brother, no, don't embrace me. I was down here in Pageland the other morning. Uh, to pick up the papers and there was a local preacher that I saw and of course as soon as we greeted each other he's telling me about his his ventures and of course I began to preach truth once I did that you can imagine what happened all right and this was my last remark to the preacher I said man Come see me. Let us sit down and break bread in the book. I say, you're welcome anytime to come see me. You think he's going to come? He is not going to come to see me. I know that. Running, running in Yahshua's name. Let me run a little bit. Running in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Got my bag ready packed. Red, I look at all my ready to go. Oh, I'm running in Yahshua's name. Oh, I'm running, running, running in Yahshua's mighty name. Oh, I'm running in the Torah, the Torah of Yah. Oh, I'm running, I'm running, running to the end. Oh, I'm running. Yahshua's mighty name, who oh, I am, who oh, I am, I'm running, 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 running. I'm going to express my yah. You can be all dull, unexpressive. I will not be that way. I don't care if I get upset this moment, the next moment, moment let's run. Shurach 17, 26, I read that. Shurach 27, 30. Quickly. It says, malice or shav, this emptiness in us, that's what shav is. We should not take the name of Yah ar Abba for shav. That is not worth anything. Malice, and that's what malice is. That's when people are malicious. They, are, they, 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 they have this virable, vile, and in their loins against everyone. And one of the truest signs of anyone that is full of malice, you will find a very moody, a damn indifferent individual. You will find some of the most moodiest individuals on the face of the earth. They're moody, they're nicer, they're, they laugh, and the next 10 minutes, they are as vile and vicious as hell. That's the spirit of malice. There's iniquity working in that heart. I'm glad you are the same today. Yesterday. And forevermore. I am your, your part, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Israel, of Jacob, you are not consumed. And yet, we, 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 we're funny. Sometimes up and sometimes down. Well, then hell stay up when you get up. Yeah. Quit going down in your own damn corrupt, vile nature. You dig it into the chambers of your damn filthiness. And it makes you dirty as hell and you're nice one moment and you're like a damn snake the next moment. What's his name on that Father Gibbert? She, uh, he says that, what's his wife's name? The one that says to him, you've been in my playhouse. Talk to me. Okay, Uncle Billy. And what's his wife's name? Miss Rose. So Uncle Billy says, you know, she can be sweet as what? She can be so sweet. Miss Rose can be sweet one moment, and then the next morning she rises up like a viper. 
He said, well, I knew she had that, what you call that thing? She was a damn schizophrenic. And you're a damn schizophrenic. That nature is not of Yah. And as a young Idr man, I cried, Yah, take this out of me. I was a damn spiritual schizophrenic. I know it's not, Yah. Anyone that operates in that spirit, there's something drastically wrong in their nature. It is the birth, it is the establishment of the zero, the seed, of the mark of this vile beast. Because when the Torah speaks to you to change, to make teshuva, you don't change. When kindness doesn't make you change to turn from your ways, you are a damn sick beast. It's like a dog, you feed that dog and he turns and bite you. I don't care how big a dog is, I'm kicking his head. If a dog bites me that I feed, if he bites me, he's in trouble. I don't give a damn if it's a St. Bernard. I wouldn't have one. Of course, you know I like Rottweilers. But if I feed a Rottweiler and he bites me, come here, boy. Come on, boy. Here's some more bread. Let me put my collar on you. Make sure I got it tight. Yeah, you can call me the Michael Vick if you want to. Call the law on me. If a dog bit me. Come here, boy. Not come here. Come here. Ah, come on, boy. Ah, pop, pop. Ah, okay. Let me give him a collar tight. I did one like that. The little young ones were playing in the bowling. I said, oh, you can't do that. Mm -mm, you did that to my little one. They can't defend. And they were little things. Come here, boy. I tied him up and I got the collar tight. That old big head, he couldn't get out. And I tied him on a tree out there. I said, you dirty beast, I got something for you. And I got me, that's right, I got me a piece of two by four. And I beat the hell out of that dog. And his face was split. <laughs> he was coming, I said, oh, boy, but I got you. The chain is tight, you can't get it loose. You can try, but you can't get it loose. And I beat him down until he humbled himself. And every time I walked away, <laughs> and I didn't feed him for five days. You dirty bastard. That's what this beast is. It is a mind without the consciousness of Yah. I use the word bastard. I'm not going to stop using it. It is one that has no birthright to the kingdom. And that damn Rottweiler had no birthright to the kingdom. If it did, it would not assault one of our little kingdom tithe. And because of that, then I want to let him know that this is the mark of a beast. I will deal with you like a beast. And that's why Yah is going to deal with this beast's nature, the mind, or the mark of this beast one way. In the fury of his indignation, let me read that quickly. What's in his cup, all right? No, let me read this quickly in, 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 in Shirak. Malice, Shirak 27, 30, malice and wrath, these are also abominable. So if you have malice and wrath, you're drinking from this dirty horse cup, and the sinful man will possess both. When you find someone that's full of malice and they're angry quick, that's the nature. See, a man that practiced sin, a woman that practiced sin, that's their nature. That's their nature. And one that's a sinful man, you will see the possession of that in them. It's right to do Tav Yisra'ya. As much as we have opportunity, we have opportunity among Yisra'ya to talk, do excellent, be beautiful unto each other. Especially, do talk unto all men. But there's a preference, especially them of the house of Yisra'ya. You're always still right by Yisra'ya. Even if you suffer the wrong, you still do right by them. Even if you segregate, separate, all right, you go, hold up now, go ahead. Some other time, maybe one other day. Not now, okay? Not right now. Now don't mess with me. If you don't mess with me, we'll be all right. And maybe one day down the road, maybe, maybe, I'm not going to say certainly, but don't mess with me. That's me. That's, that's the nature. Hallelujah. That's my nature. Because I know that if you're rebellious now, you're going to be rebellious down the road. That's right. Unless there's a radical change. And then once you see someone, you can tell in, the, in their briars, in their mesach, whether there's a change. So one that operates in malice and wrath, they're always angry. They're always vengeful. They have drink out of the cup, the cauldron of hell. Their mind is becoming cancerous. They're becoming delirious, and even they think that they are right. 
And so we draw our compatriots in with us and say, Oh, Shibria, man, you are a man. You know, that's how we are. That's how we are. We draw in those that are uh, compatriots of ours uh, of the same spirit because our minds uh, have become so diseased. Uh, it has become so cancerous and uh, there is no life at all. Uh, and we know that when the Torah of Yah spoke, it brings life. Uh, and Yah said, uh, as Azaki said, let there be light. Uh, and, his la- and the Ruach of Yah moved upon uh, the Mayim, the waters, uh, the rivers of water. And we have the rivers of water. Bless is the man that is planted by the rivers of waters, as we said. Uh, for his fruit, uh, his tree shall bear his fruit uh, in due season. We don't have no waters in us, uh, and we certainly don't have the damn fruit in us. We have damnable fruits, uh, but we don't have the puree or the puree or the pure fruits of Yah in us. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they're full of emptiness. Hallelujah. Quickly here. In Shirach 41.5. It says here. The children of sinners. Are abominable children. They're pig ghoul. They're filthy. Those that. Bring forth seed. In their vile wicked. Ways. We see that today. And I'm not trying. I'm being critical. But it is not to insult. Women that have fallen. Under the. The subduction of darkness for some kind of sensual pleasure and thinking that they are going to get a reward out of it. There's no reward in that, my young bath. There's nothing but a baby with someone that's not going to even be a father. There's no reward in that, period. You save yourself for an ish. Y'all can preserve you. He can't clean you. He'll cleanse you up and make you a wife. Hallelujah. That's why all mothers, all the Ema, the Zachin, should always be teaching the young women how to be wise. You don't have no damn time for nothing else. Teach them the beauty of a wife. And it's expressed in your beauty too, mama. Not you acting like a damn crazy $2 jackpot fool. The elderly man, the only thing he can teach through all of his trials and his agonies, and teach the young men how to love a wife. Hell, because he's never experienced love, he doesn't have a damn thing to teach the young man. He can't show him the beauty of love because he doesn't know how to love. He's cold and he's distant. I'm not taking a damn thing back. We can't escape. We can't go over the Torah of Yah. I will, my young friend... You're getting there. You're getting gray like me. So, uh, my elder friend. All right. Hallelujah. The children of the sinners are abominable children, and they are accustomed to dwell with the wicked. When you find those that are children that are vile and unclean, they drink out of the cup and the cauldron of darkness. They love the wicked. They always find a way to cohabitate to dwell among the unclean. That's why, and I will bring that as I go farther, uh, as even Zachin Yaramaya, he taught on the leprosy. I will bring that out again, how that even when one had, the, when one uh, was recognized by leprosy, it was the Kohan, it was the low spot, and only the Kohan could, uh, could recognize that and see that and declare unclean. It was a process. The seventh day, if the one was unclean, he said unclean. But it's one thing about the wicked, they love, they love the cohabitation with the wicked. They love the world. They love mingling with the world. They love being among the world. They love the fellowship of the world. They love talking with the world. They love dining with the world. They love eating with the world. It's the mark of hell. And they don't love the fellowship of Yisrael. They don't love to die with the people of God. They don't love each other. They don't love sitting with the bath. They don't love sitting with the ark. They don't love laboring with the ark. They don't love laboring with the ark. Something is twisted in our damn minds. There's an unclean mark in our minds. It's causing us to become senile. We can't even cognitively, uh, consciously uh, identify what is correct and what is false. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Can I show us what's in Yah's cup? We know what's in her cup. There's much. The abominations. I will share more. But I want to show you what's in Yah's cup. Turn quickly to Gilead. Revelation. 
Yon says Revelation 14 10. He says, Bavel, this spirit is going to fall. This beastly nature is coming down. Bavel, Revelation 14 10. Yah says, and the same, those that reject Yah, those that uh, have received the mark of this vile whore. Yah says, the same shall drink of the Yahin, the wine of the wrath, of the wrath is of his resentment, his terror of Yahweh, which is poured out. Is poured out. See, he has caused the mixture of her cup to be poured out uh, with mixtures. But Yah's cup, it is poured out without mixture into the cup. He has a cup of his indignation. His zah, um, his terror, his indignation. He has a cup. It's filled with indignation. Uh, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the and in the presence of the Lamb, when one receives the mark of this false anti-Hamashiach spirit, when there's a false anti-Hamashiach spirit, you receive the mark of the beast, the mark of the priest of the Be'el, the mark of the Lord, and the Lord God, and God Lord, and Lord Jesus, and Jesus Lord. Damn them all. Damn them all. You receive this kind of consciousness uh, that it caused you to uh, smear the name of Yah, to, uh, to object to anything that is Torah. Oh, we're, that you're so legalistic. Uh, well, hell, everything in life is legalistic. There's some legality to everything we do. An example, lay your finger down, take an axe, cut it off and see the legality of that. Uh, it's not going to grow back. This is a damn stupid generation. It is damn their mind. Uh, it's so clogged with sin and abomination. They cannot see the beauty of Yah. Yeah. It is the power of the beast government that uh, our minds have been trained because we've been beguiled. We've been tricked. We've been deceived, Yisrael. And Yah, as he raises up his truth in volume out of the loins of messengers, uh, that it caused that house to be torn down only in Yisrael. You're not used to it, it's not going to be torn. And they go to their graves with their lies and believing it. They go to their graves defending lies. And we know that Hashatan was a liar. He was a murderer and a liar. He was a murderer. He was a thief from the beginning. Because he did not dwell in truth. If you speak a lie, you speak it of your father, Hashatan, because he's the father of all lies. So your Christo is a damn lie. Your image of Christo is a damn lie. It is the image of this beastly nature. You let someone uh, come against that damn image. Uh, and people, I don't give a damn what their nationality, the color of their skin is. They will defend that damn faggot. They will defend that damn faggot, wicked, long-haired, hippie, faggot dog image. They will defend that. That's the truth. Oh, that's the Lord. You can't talk about him. Who in the hell says it's the Lord? And they're stupid, I will, man. Come on, we can't be so sensitive. We don't expose this damn mess. If your damn blackness, defend that you're twisted. If your damn whiteness, defend that you're damn twisted. I don't give a damn who you are. You should condemn that damn lie. It's a damn lie. He was not even of the European descent at all. Descendants, so he could not have looked like that of the sons of Jephthah. They defend the damn lies. They defend it. They get angry. It's a lie, Yisrael. Are those that make a lie brought in into the kingdom? Uh, no, they're not. And you defend a damn lie, you're twisted. You know you're twisted. You know you're sick. You know you're twisted. You know something is wrong with you. We, we are set to defend truth. Hallelujah. So in his hand, there's a cup of his wrath and his indignation. And his fire shall resonate from that. Revelation 16, 19. He talks about Bavel here. This great city she has fallen. Revelation, Gilyana 16, 19. It says the Rab, not the Gadol, but the Rab, the city of great wealth. Is not America a city of great wealth? Sure it is. A nation that the other day, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, our president, our king... And Yah has given us this king because of the nature of the people and our own hearts. You understand? 
Then Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, when he took over the office, uh, this nation was like $13 trillion deficit. And these damn twisted minded, and I don't defend Mr. Barack Hussein Obama because he's not for me or you. Our kingdom is of Yah. But you don't make something right by lying against it or make it wrong by speaking against it. He come into a situation whereby the nation was $13 trillion in the deficit. And now in his three years, he has increased it $4 trillion. Under Mr. Bush and Mr. Reagan and Bush and Clinton, uh, and this damn twisted mindset says, uh, he got us in this trouble. Well, you're a damn law. He is not the one that got you in this trouble. It was 42 presidents before him. And they had to be of the pure bloods uh, of the racist mentality to segregate, uh, establish the people by their whiteness. Uh, and that's just a fact. Don't deny it. Uh, it's the wickedness of this nation got us in trouble. It's the defiance of Yah when the leaders uh, and when those that know the truth, they hold it uh, in unrighteousness. Mr. Obama hasn't got us in this trouble. And damn Mr. Obama. I don't defend him. Hallelujah. I defend truth. Uh, I will honor him. Yes, I will. If he comes today, don't come today. We want to get the grass mowed. We want to make sure that everything is clean. I want to rake the fields out here. I want to do a little touch-up and paint jobs. I want to blow the leaves off from everywhere. I want to sweep. I want to edge everything up. I want to make sure it looks nice when he comes. Sure I would. I want to know what he eats. And Michelle Obama, tell me, Miss First Lady. She likes broccoli. We, we will have the secret service. They can come and watch our precious Holt. We will have our own broccoli. We'll, we'll cook cabbages. We'll pick them on our garden. We'll cook collard greens. And if you like lamb, Mr. Brock, I will make sure I cook that lamb right. I will get my oxymoron, get us a fatted lamb. I want to butcher him for who the president is coming, our king. You don't dishonor the king. You don't do that. I said to us when Mr. Bush was uh, president, I said, uh, the only thing he has to do with Miss Sheehan, he goes out there and calls Bob's pork, pork and ribs barbecue. And he said, Bob, I want three hogs. Not hogs, but hogs. I want all the sweet Texas iced tea and some bread. That's all we need. And make some of that Bob belly fat daddy coleslaw. What's that going to cost me? Well, Mr. President Bush, I'll give you a deal. I got four hogs here that I need to cook. I want all four of them. If you can get a few more hogs, bring the hogs out. All we need is hog meat. We need some bread, some buns, and tea. Bring it out, shut the grill up, and they get to look at what is this for? Well, this is commissioned by Mr. Bush. I'm, I'm Fat Daddy Big Belly Bob. And Bob, I want you to wear a t-shirt with the sleeves cut out. And I want your belly to be sticking out there. And I don't want it to come, come all the way down to you, but I want to sit right on the crescents of that gut. You get the sling in that hog grease, Miss Sheehan and all the, all the news reporters out there, when you get it right in that hog meat began to smell. Uh, and that crisp skin on that hog, uh, it turns all brown and pretty golden brown. Uh, I want you to call me up on my cell. You don't worry about it. Uh, and I want the Secret Service, my boys, we're going to drop in a truck. And I'm going to ride on the back of the truck. And I'm coming out and saying, Miss Sheehan, how are you doing there, Bob? You got this pork belly ready? Give me a sandwich. You don't want a sandwich. You want a sandwich, Mr. Bush. I began to talk to them. How are you doing, Miss Sheehan? I understand you, boy. I know it. And I want us out of there, but I want to come on, break a little bread with me today. You just saw the whole thing. It was, she, she was, come on. I did, did the same thing for Mr. Bush if he came. He didn't like broccoli, the father, but I would have made sure we had a beautiful meal. What did he like? Chicken? You a whole get in there and fry some chicken like you never fried it. Simeon, let's get that spray paint. Let's touch that. Come, come on. Okay. Whoa, brothers. Come on, Ark. Let's get this place right. Make it look nice. We represent the king. He think he's the king, but we got a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to proceed a little further before I close today, all right? Bear with me, Yisraya. Hallelujah. It says, and the great city was divided into three parts. Uh, that's vital. We'll get to the depths of that at a later time. Uh, and the city of the nations, uh, and the cities of the nations, New York City, London, Paris, uh, all of them. 
Los Angeles, the cities of the nations, it says nations, they fell. And great Babel came up to remembrance Zachah into the mine before Yah to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierce wrath of Yah. She is his cup, but he has a cup in his hand that Babel is not going to quench that. And we allow our minds to be given over unto the satisfaction of Babel, this state of mind that rejects Yah. It is quintessential to the mark, the nature, the very spirit of the beast. And you're giving yourself over unto that, Yisrael, we are in a matrix of terror. That's why we must govern our labab, our lab by the Torah. Our ways, our actions must be governed by the Torah. It must be. This is what I want us to do every day from here on out. Even the uh, when we gather in the morning for breakfast, I want us to begin reading as my Zachin uh, McDonald told me to do, and I will do it. He's an elder, he's much older than me, a wise man. And so my Zachin uh, McDonald there in Junction City, Kansas, he told me from the book of Mishri, every day you read a chapter. So we got in the dining hall in the morning every day, I want a chapter read. From one of you, ah, I want you to read it every day. And he says, just continue that from month to month. So when we get to the 31st chapter, we start back at the first, all right? He said, I want you to do that. He didn't say, I want you to do it. He said, do that. And I shall obey what the Zachin said to me. It's a wonderful thing to have elderly men around you with wisdom and sense and knowledge and direction. I will do that. I will, my Zachin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you shall surely, you shall kill the bastards. You say you shall slay, you shall smite, you shall kill the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. You shall take the edge of your sword. You shall take truth and you shall flay that one open, Yisrael. You shall by the ruach of Yah expose the wicked ways before all. That that spirit does not rise up among you again. We are so intimidated today. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's me. I won't hide things uh, that are detrimental to your people. Uh, I won't do it. I don't want to get involved in anything that will kill us, Yisraya. My prayer to you all the time. I know you all may think that I'm being facetious. I'm telling a lie, but I'm not. I will pray even when there are thoughts and things that I know that are not of his nature. I say, you kill me. Kill me. you kill me now. I mean, you know I mean it. Yeah. I say it all the time to him. Kill me now. Don't let me bring an infraction upon your house, your people. Kill me, yeah, I mean it. I'd rather die. I mean it with all of my heart. Kill me dead, yeah. You know I'm not pretending. Kill me. I mean that thing. I mean it. Kill me, yeah. Kill me. And I'm not pretending one bit. To cause a death, a void in the house of Yisrael, that I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. Yah say you shall destroy them. You shall take the word, the Zakain, the Zakain, the Isha. Take the word and cut that one to the slithers of hell until every part of their flesh cry out. He said, you shall destroy, you shall haram. You shall take the sword and haram early. You shall completely destroy, desecrate, bring them down to nothing that their damn flesh will not rise up. He said, you shall destroy them in a way. He said, and all that's therein, and all those uh, that are in that corner that conside with them, uh, that strengthen that wicked abomination, you kill them all. You take the truth and you expose them all and let their wickedness be known, Yisraya, because if you don't, then this mother of harlotry, she's going to cause that abomination to fester. You go to communities, Yisraya, not to say that all the people in the community are like, but if you find a certain spirit in that community, you can go from house to house. It's basically that way. 
Their communities you go through, every little young girl got a baby, two or three, that's a fact. You got those that are grandmothers at 28 years old today. That's not y'all. You got those that are grandmothers at 30 years old. Come on. That's a fact. 45, they're great, great grandmothers. Great grandmothers. Come on, Yisra'ah. Yeah. That should not be, Yisra'ah. Yeah. It should not be. When you find this abominable thing, when you find the very nature of the beast in the midst, a beast will kill you. A lion, you may train it all you want to, but once the natural instinct of that lion arises, it will eat you to pieces. You can pat the head of a tiger, and that's one of the most ferocious beasts in the land, a tiger. They're very solitude, they mind their business, they come together to congregate just to produce another tiglet or tigress. And then after that, he goes his way and she goes her way. You understand? They're very solitude animals. Uh, they don't mingle together like lions. Uh, but when it comes down to a beast, uh, can you imagine that beast? I was looking one day. And what are those beasts? A tiger. You hiding on that rafter thinking you're getting by because that's what we all going to try to get to if one comes in here. He literally can stand and jump and take you off that rafter. So I probably got the best shot. Mama, I love you, but I'm almost jumping here. Boom, boom. And I'm diving. He said, I got you, boy. You're going to be the first one because you're a big fat boy. I like all of that meat. And it becomes a beast like nature you don't care about. You will take that venomous, vile nature of the mother of your bosom, the very strength of this beast's identity and trait, and you will try to mark everyone with it. It's like the lioness goes, uh, or the lion goes and he skeets from a little pouch behind his anus whereby he marks his territory. Or he goes with his, it's not urine that he marks it with. And he goes and skeets and another lion, he comes and says, can't mess with that. It's already marked. And that's what that vile nature and the spirit of the beast, it marks us like that. It's almost like the marking of a skunk. We stink. We stink. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me read this last verse that I'm going to stop here for today and we're going to continue. I've got some things that I'm going to show you, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to bear us down too much. There are those out there, Akhmikaya, say, oh man, you don't preach long enough. But he's not standing up here. He, he, how, how you doing, Akhmikaya? Ya bra. It says this in the book of Dibarim. He said, when you do that, in verse 13, 16, and you shall gather all the spores of it into the midst of the street thereof. When you find one like that, when there's a nature of that spirit among you, uh, you don't go and take that individual and brace and you keep. That's why there are things that, that when individuals leave here, I burn. I don't want that a part of our, uh, of our community structure. I don't, want, I don't care how valuable it is, Yisra'ah. You understand, when you find the nature of that spirit, when you find that abominable nation, nature, when I send you to a place, I'll grant you that you take it all to the street there and you burn it with the fire of the city. He said, and all the spoils thereof, every bit of it, for Yah your Abba, for it shall be an heap forever, it shall not be built again. Yah said, you destroyed. You don't embrace that. You don't embrace those unclean things uh, and the nature and the acts of those that have been perpetrated among Yisrael. Yeah? You take it because uh, it resides in them that belong in Yisrael. Yeah? If it's a man that he stinks and he sits on the same couch all the time, uh, the couch is going to stink like him. If that was the woman that laid on the couch and she ate and the crumb, the, the couch going to smell like her. You want a clothes? Hell, the clothes smells like her. That's a fact. You don't want that. You don't want the unclean things. You don't want the dirty garments. Just like we are nation, nation of like Akon, like Akon. He saw the nice Babylonian garment and he took it and hid it with a few shackles. You go and you find something you think is nice and you hide it in your house. You're, you're procuring a vile thing. That's why I say, lock him up, burn it, throw it away. We are, we're, we're ignorant people. We're so ignorant. The reason we're ignorant is because our sin drives us away from the Torah of Yah. It allow us to establish something so unclean, what that is perverse, vile, uh, wicked, and wretched. It is abominable. It is vile before Yah. We cannot allow our minds, 
by the programming and the teaching of this wicked world to cause us to escape, to defy, deny, to go aside from our responsibilities according to Torah. There's a responsibility to every man and there's a responsibility to every woman. You understand? And if we do not fulfill that, there's a nature, there's a birth, there's a seed of a beast nature, it is abominable and it's vile. We'll get into that more next week as we're going to conclude here. I'm tired. I didn't feel well this morning. I said to my ish, Sean, I was kind of nutty. She said, what did you say? I said, baby. Because I, I didn't feel well. I, honestly, I did not. You understand? But the fire comes, and that's all right with me. Hallelujah. As I said at one time, that's enough now. Hallelujah. But I didn't feel well. I, uh, I really did not. So may the riches of your rest upon all of you that have joined us for this live broadcast. May the riches of your rest upon you in a mighty way. You that have joined us on the Ustream, do assist us and help us. It costs to do this. And if you come here and see the small congregation, you will know we don't have very many funds. And I use them carefully. Hallelujah. I do. I use them. And I make sure that every dime and penny, we utilize it with such preciseness that it goes farther than what one could understand. Send your gifts, your offerings, your tithes. Send them here. No, we need tithes. Don't let no one tell you. A lot of these say that you don't have to do it. Lies from hell. You must maintain the house of Yah. May Yah barak you. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. We're going to have a great time for Pesach. We'll keep you informed the great activities that we shall gather. It's going to be a wonderful time. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim and all things are above. We do barak you for your true Hamashiach, for your great riches and blessings. And those that have joined us on the live broadcast, a tremendous audience today, Yah. We pray you bless each home that's represented. We pray you barak Yisrael here, your people, your small elect. I appreciate everything about Teshua, Oma, Achna, Holt. I appreciate them all, yeah. Everyone individually, yeah. I do. Everyone is as vital as the other one because we're all one, Echad, a part of the body. Bless them all. Give strength to their bosom and let them know that all shall be well. I pray in us. Give them Shalom. Give them Shabbat this day. We ask it all in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh man, ya barak Israel.